<laughs> oh, my resume of skills continues to amaze me. I will thank you, Purple Prince. That is so kind of you to say. Thank you. Yeah, no, my, um, I'm a woman of many traits. I'm a woman of many traits. I will tell you, I'll tell you that much. I'll keep some a mystery. Parts of my resume remain a mystery. <laughs> But um, but no, Toga, I'm so happy you like your emotes. I'm so happy you like your merch. I cannot wait to see the store all up. And I know Promyson was having a, a load of fun uploading those. <laughs> I think he tried making them into leggings. It was like the most brilliant thing I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, Purple Prince, the last art thing you did was voxel art to also reflect sociability they reflect like brands and items that are social and i loved that for toga because toga your discord is always blowing up on my phone you have like the most beautiful following i've ever seen and um and the way you interact with your viewers is is very engaging it's very social you've definitely created a family and i wanted to reflect that at first with um with your like script font and um, as you can see, that is why Disney uses it. That's why Hallmark uses it. It's, oh, Toga! Toga! <laughs> oh, your emails are still pending. Oh, I can't wait to see them up. Thank you for the biddies. I love you so much. Oh, yes, I know, Killer Goonie. Look at that. Could you, could you, oh, don't you adore that? Hold on, let me put, let me put these little biddies here on the top. Let's see. We're gonna upload that. We're gonna bring this to the top. Whenever I put on all of these different images from my class, my alert box goes to the bottom and I have to remember to push it to the top. But yes, let's see, let's see. We're almost there. Oh well, that should that should help a little bit. <laughs> oh, Promycin! Oh, Promycin! Look at you! <laughs> I need to get bid badges. Yes, that's my next goal. But hey, I was busy with Toga. I've been I've been busy with the queen, but yeah, no, I promise you everybody there's going to be badges and uh, Rewards and making custom rewards. Uh, I literally discovered a, the badges just this morning <laughs> So on my defense. Oh, oh my gosh Loa Vulper Loa. Oh, Vulper Loa. Wow. It's kind of that sounds like a evil sexy villain from a Marvel film. Okay, Vulper Loa like, like um Ah, oh, it kind of reminds me of Poison Ivy. It had that same tune to it. Oh, but thank you so much for the bits. I'm loving this hype. Ah, <laughs> oh, Purple Prince. Looking forward to seeing what I come up with. I thank you, thank you. But uh, but yeah, like I was saying, I wanted to first make you a script on Toga because of this reason. I wanted because your brand is very social and it's also very elegant and creative, and uh, that's why I opted at first for the for the script text because, let's see, um, like granted, like this is something I've always, like typography is, as hard as it is, it always fascinates me because of how it can change an energy of a piece. Like for those of you who um, know uh, Gigadatum, like <laughs> uh, Gigadatum, the streamer, uh, he actually uh, wasn't Gigadatum before, before he was originally Games and Gains, when he was purely a gaming streamer. And this was the, and this was the, um, the design I made for his banner at the time. And again, I wanted to create a, like, to mimic a font that I thought, okay, let's see, games and games. Well, he is very much into action games. He, like, is, like, like you know, he's a bodybuilder. He's a weightlifter. So we want something that is kind of strong, that reflects maybe metal, that. You know, it just has this element of action and dynamism, but also very, I don't know, like poised at the same time, if that's the right word. But And um, that is why I modeled his typography for Games and Games after the Transformers font, because there was a lot of elements that were very similar in the two things. You know, like Transformers, it has a lot of action. It also has like this you know, they're Transformers, they're strong, they're big, they're powerful. And that is exactly what I associated with Games and Gains. <laughs> and um, so yeah, so like, oh, like, 
Loa, thank you. I'm so ha thank you for saying that's awesome. Yes, I think it's awesome too. I'm sad that he changed his name because <laughs> this was such a great design. I really enjoyed making this, um, but alas, now it just sits in my hard drive <laughs> of memories. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, this is how um, purple prints, like, uh, like for you who's, who struggled with uh, typography class, this is at least how I approach um, a lot of my projects nowadays. And at least that helps me a lot in order to narrow down, okay, how am I going to select a font? How am I going to choose a font that best re represents this person's brand? Um, yeah, just look to what others are doing. Look to the adjectives that this that we can use to describe this person. Uh, for me, that is uh, that is a huge a huge help <laughs> because I am very indecisive when I design, and I go through every single option, like all hundred forms of font. But in re in reality, I should be saying typeface. Typeface is the proper term. Like, um, so for the rest of the stream, I'm going to, instead of saying font, I'm going to say typeface. <laughs> oh, like Purple Prince, you're thinking of working on something again? You should! Do you want all power to you? You should work on something again. I would love to see what you have. Hey, if, like, um, if you, if you work on something again, like, join my Discord and post it. Join my Discord and post it on the channel Critique My Art because every week I showcase someone's work from that channel and um, it like it gets um, that way it gets like viewership and we get to talk about um, the piece itself and uh, and yeah it's just good promotion <laughs> good promotion good feedback that's what I want this stream to be. <laughs> um, no, I remember when our teacher was hating when we said font and not typeface. Yes, 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 I know, I know. They like graduate school ruined me, so now I have to say typeface too. <laughs> but hey, I blame, I don't think it's our fault because I blame Word and I blame Photoshop. I blame all the programs because not once do they say typeface when you're selecting a style. Not once, it always says font at the top. So we have been genetically programmed to say font. So it's not your fault, okay? <laughs> oh, like choo-choo, aww. <laughs> um, Johnny Sins, hi Holy Quill, hi chat. Aw, welcome Johnny, welcome. Yeah, no, I was just showing the chat an old piece that I designed um, for Gigadatum when he was back, when he was, used to be called Games and Gains. And uh, as you can see, I modeled after the Transformers typeface because <laughs> I thought I had very, a lot of similar elements. So thank you for stopping in. This is going to be a quick lesson, just a quick lesson on typefaces because I, I've taken, Lord of the Flies, I have taken so many classes on book arts, on typography, on design, and I just wish that someone would have just narrowed it down for me, that they would have just said, okay, look, if you go for a script font, it's going to represent elegance, it's going to represent creativity, and it's going to show that it's like fun and social. Just that, you see, I just summarized a whole class in just that one little bit, and I want to give that to all of you, because, you know, like, all kinds of fonts can be put into families, like the serif font. Now, for those of you who don't know, a serif, like is a type of font, is a type of typeface that has just those cute, cute, cute little. The I, I call them. <laughs> I'm gonna use my Spanish here. I call them piquitos. Just those cute, cute little ornamental elements at the end of each letter that extends out and just makes it just that little element of fineness. Just that little, that that little extra piece that really stands. <laughs> and um. And what's great about serif fonts, uh, as you can see, they are heavily, heavily used in um, in luxury brands. So we see them in Vogue, Louis Vuitton, Gucci. And the reason why they use serif fonts a lot is because for some reason, serif seems to create the aura of respectability, also trustworthiness, and most importantly, authority. I know that sounds really strange, but hear me out. All these brands are like express and um, base their brand on elitism. 
an elitism through um, expensiveness, um, through, how should I put it? Um, like through quality and, um, and through design. And so they heavily focus, so they heavily focus all their typefaces and branding using serifs because it's like, okay, I am Gucci. I am here. I am, I am ready to conquer all the regular open sans serifs and all the Helvetica's. <laughs> and, um, and they're effective and they're effective. And I can guarantee you almost like at least 98% of any logo that uses a serif is an expensive brand, without a doubt. It's like we don't, we barely see like Gap use a serif font, maybe on just like one hoodie, but never on their logo. You see what I mean? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the beautiful thing about serif fonts. But, um, but for those of you, and this is my biggest, biggest kept secret. now. Pay very close attention because this goes for everybody, everybody on this stream, all right? If you are writing an important essay or any important letter that, let's say you need to get to, I don't know, that you need to write an essay that's at least five pages long and you're like, oh, how am I going to get to those five pages? Well, I have a hack for all of you. So what is the serif font that we use the most for writing an essay? Time and time again, we've always heard the teacher say, you gotta use Times New Roman. I mean, the, the amount of times, I don't know why they're obsessed with Times New Roman, okay? Times New Roman is my least favorite typeface of all time. <laughs> it's my least favorite. And, um, and even though like it's a serif font, I just, I don't know. I think it's just been overused and overhyped for what it is. But if you're writing an essay, you should always use Palatino. And as you can see here, Palatino is extremely similar to Times New Roman. Now, here I've blown it up for you, so you have to imagine it in a much smaller 12-point font, because uh, because it's like generally identical. And the reason why you should write in Palatino is because it is just ever, ever so slightly, ever so slightly longer than Times New Roman, and I was able to get a good hunk of extra paragraph to fit, <laughs> to fit that extra bit of essay that I needed without having to write anything more. So everybody, whatever you do, forget Times New Roman, write in Palatino. This is gold, people. I, re I repeat, this is gold. This was my biggest kept secret all throughout undergrad and um, my master's, and nobody noticed. Nobody knows. I guarantee no professor, no teacher is ever going to notice that you use Palatino over Times New Roman. And I guarantee you, it's going to save you time and energy. Oh, thank you, Guni. You love this? Yes, yes. Because also one thing that I found very interesting when I use Palatino, and maybe it's a coincidence, but I like to think not. Palatino, for some reason, uh, and it's been scientifically proven, it is, the, it is one of the few typefaces that is the most aesthetically pleasing to the eye, both in print and digital form. So whenever I wrote an essay in Palatino, I actually always got a higher grade than if I ever wrote it in Times New Roman. I mean, granted, maybe I just did a better job on my essay writing, but I like to think it was Palatino. So one of these days when I win an award, and go up there on stage with like my with, with like a little trophy I'll just be like oh thank you ladies and gentlemen I'd like to thank my mother my sister all my streamers like all my streamer friends all my viewers for this award and for Palatino for making it easier to write all my essays <laughs> at least that's what I plan my speech to be <laughs> but uh if anyone asks though Palatino is my it is my Italian, it's my Italian foreign love. <laughs> oh, but um, you wish you knew this tip when you were in school and college. Fuck, I know, I know, Johnny. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I wish I, I wish I could have t like we knew each other and I could have told you this. But hey, you can still use it for writing important emails. You can still use it for writing important, I don't know, papers. 
Uh, too bad we can't use it for filing our taxes, but hey. <laughs> it is easier for the teacher to read. It wouldn't be surprised if they subconsciously graded it higher. I agree. I agree because it was just that little element of difference that would allow it to psychologically stand out to the professor. That maybe that they thought, oh, like, this is Times New Roman, but I don't know, there's something more pleasant about Sophia's essay. I don't know. It just has that way, oh, let's give her an extra star. <laughs> But um, but yeah, no, so that goes for everybody. Everybody, forget Times New Roman, Palatino is the way to go. Done. If not, I'm gonna come after all of you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, as for um, sans serif fonts, which are the closed version, I call them the closed, like, sans serif typefaces. You see, you see purple prints? I'm already messing up. <laughs> Thank goodness none of my professors are watching this. Um, uh, sans serif typefaces typefaces are the closed version of the classic serifs and what I like what's brilliant about sans serifs is that they represent three things honesty progressiveness and sensibility which I find to be incredibly hilarious because Facebook uses sans serif Okay, they need all like the honesty perception they can get, right? Like we're like selling all our data. I mean, come on, they need all the help they can get. Uh, same goes for Twitter. Same goes uh, for you know Google. All like all the social medias for the most part that have had, you know, that are known to be sketchy for selling our data, for you know manipulating the algorithm, fake accounts. Of course they're gonna go for a typeface that is supposed to represent honesty, progressiveness, like, you know, like, trustworthiness? <laughs> I mean, if you just break it down like that, it is bloody hilarious. I mean, at least for me, um, oh, Ruby Rube, oh, you love you some typefaces, oh, mwah! I love me some rubies. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, no. Ruby, I'm so happy to see you on here. I'm gonna miss you so much when you leave for the woods. But um, yeah, you're the best. Pacifico, blessed. Oh, you can't explain. Yeah, no, Pacifico is a beautiful, beautiful typeface. I believe it is, I, I believe it is a serif, a serif typeface. I was just telling everyone how you should always write in Palatino because it looks just like Times New Roman, but it's slightly, slightly bigger and it'll help you fill up essays faster. <laughs> I know, I was a terrible professor. <laughs> I just taught all my students how to cheat. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, so that is, um, that is the thing with serif fonts that I just find extremely hilarious that Facebook, Twitter, all the socials use this, this typeface to try to manipulate our perception, to try to make us believe that they are more honest than they really think we are. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, like this, and I can go through all the typefaces and tell you guys what each of them represent, but I'm gonna keep this short, and I created all of you a cheat sheet. So for all of anyone who's a designer out there, or is just even just curious about like typefaces themselves, screenshot this. This is an excellent cheat sheet. This was what got me through my master's when I was getting my master's in printmaking, where I literally had to use type every day. <laughs> um, uh, definitely use uh, this cheat sheet for yourselves. It will help you narrow down whenever you're doing a design project. Um, it will help, help you narrow down what uh, typeface family might be best for the piece that you're trying to create. Oh, Johnny Sins, nice! Thank you! Thank you! I'm happy you appreciate. Uh, were you made to watch Helvetica Quill? Uh, were you made to watch Helvetica Quill? <laughs> Oh, Ruby, at the bit, uh, like I was telling at the beginning of the stream that I actually had to categorize the biggest collection, the, uh, the biggest collection of typeface in North America, all by myself. All by myself. It took me over a year to finish it. And uh, because it took a long time because some of these typefaces were centuries old. They were centuries old and they didn't come labeled. And a lot of them were typefaces that we don't use anymore. You can't plug it into Word and it and it just pops up. Like, you know, oh, okay, it's it's Minion Pro or it's German Black. Uh, no, none of that. 
none of that. Um, so I had to go sifting through books, <laughs> sifting through old ancient books to try to, to try to figure out what this typeface could be. And based on the height, I was like, okay, it could be, like it's a little bit shorter than the American typeface. So it's probably European. We can like, and the, the metal is, has an oxide to it. So it's probably from, um, uh, like probably from the UK, it's probably from England. And I'm uh, sorry, I had a hair in my mouth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's probably from England. And uh, then I would choose my books from there and try to narrow it down to figure out what this typeface was. So yeah, it was a labor of love. <laughs> You're obsessed with Franklin Gothic Heavy. Oh, Franklin Gothic Heavy. I forgot about him. Oh, Franklin Gothic Heavy's the best. I, I, I always enjoyed cataloging him because the type was always so heavy. <laughs> the drawers where we kept Franklin Gothic were the heaviest in the studio. I kid you not. If there was ever a bodybuilder, of typefaces, it would be Franklin Gothic. I can see why you like it, Ruby. <laughs> oh, you saw a documentary on Helvetica, it was a bit snooze. Yes, Helvetica is one of the most overrated, boring fonts there is, but it is a very important font. It is, it, like, it was the typeface that, like, that, that it was originally created to be the typeface to create the most amount of impact that a typeface could possibly have. So it would be the, the typeface for posters, for calling people's attention. It was the one to have. And there was an era that everybody wanted to use Helvetica when it was invented. Everybody wanted Helvetica. And then it, I think it just died from there. <laughs> oh, you posted some examples of your work to my Discord. Thank you, Purple Prince. Oh, I can't wait to see that. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yes, hey, maybe you'll be this week, like on my next stream, maybe you'll be this week's feature. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> like, yeah, Ruby, gosh, Ruby, why? Why is it taking us this long to officially be friends? I finally, I finally found my bestie that I can talk typeface to. Oh, God, I adore you so much. It's intoxicating. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that is the cheat sheet for all of you. If anyone needs it, I'm happy to post it to my Discord, but that helped me a lot. Now, the one time, the one time I believe that a typeface wasn't designed for the psychology of it, but more so the design, was thanks to the Bauhaus. For those of you who don't know, Bauhaus was a German uh, design school that opened in like 1919, 1930, and it, it was designed to create a curriculum that would incorporate or well, more rather combine design and fine art together. And that was the main goal because before design and fine art were separate from each other and they weren't and there was no room to combine fine art design into mass production or industry. And uh, that's when the Bauhaus came in. And one of the first things they did was create their own language. And what I mean by language, I mean their own visual language. They always said, okay, a circle is associated with the color blue. Um, a square is associated with the color red and a triangle is supposed to be uh, yellow. So they created this own language and a system of rules. And one of these rules, they thought, hey, we need to create a typeface but they wanted a typeface that was just purely about the design. That was purely about the design and a design that would work across all media and a design that, I don't know, that would just stir people's innards. That would be a richness for the eye, just something beautiful to look at. I mean, how many times can, like, can we say that nowadays? How many um, artists are making art for art's sake these days? You know, nowadays everything has to have theory, everything has to have meaning, even in, in like, whether if it's um, for fine art, whether if it's for design, whether anything. But the Bauhaus, what they did with their font, it was just purely for the beauty of the aesthetic. And I loved that. I loved that. Granted, we don't have, like, like there's very few programs that have Bauhaus in, <laughs> in their typeface, but um, you're definitely able to find it and all the variations to it. You're gonna dig up, uh, let's see, Ruby, hmm. You had to take four years of type? Oh, 
No way. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, we have so much to talk about. I learn something new about you every day. <laughs> You're gonna dig up some of your Rodchenko and Bauhaus stuff. Oh, I would love that. Would you, Ruby? Oh, I would love that so much. Okay, but only after your vacation, okay? Do that after your uh, after your vacation. I don't want you spending your vacation time looking for Bauhaus stuff. <laughs> but I would really, really love that. <laughs> for those of you who don't realize, I'm a nerd and I love books. I love books with pictures. <laughs> Just anything, just send them my way. I love it. <laughs> oh, my, oh, yes. Yes, Ruby, you're speaking my language. You're speaking my language, girl. <laughs> uh, but let's see. So um, the last thing I'm going to show all of you today is... Um, because as beautiful as it is to talk about the history of typeface, how it's evolved and everything, I can go very much into depth with it. But at the end of the day, what, ma what, what really matters to us? What's happening currently, right? You know, we need, we need to have a point of reference. And, I, and for that, I would say um, Paula Scheer. Paula Scheer is a living um, gra like graphic design artist. And uh, yeah, no, like uh, her work is spectacular. It's spectacular. It's heavily influenced on typeface. Uh, if you want to know more about um, her upbringing, her livelihood, um, check out this this beautiful series on Netflix called Abstract. I think she's in season two. Um, yeah, she, it's a it's a beautiful short documentary to watch. It was it was one of my favorites. I'll definitely I'll definitely check it out if if you're interested in typefaces. But um, but yeah, she is fantastic in what she does because I because she's so heavily focused on figuring out what is the meaning of the typeface in the most minimalist form and all and also when is it important to use it in its most extravagant form she sees type as a form of like sound almost as a as a language as a portrait and that's what i love about her work she was born in 1948 so she's no spring chicken but the woman's work is still so current today like she's still creating and she is so incredibly current um one of my favorite stories that she told um was when she was hired to create the logo for citibank and they sat there in the in the meeting with the city with the with the Citibank um, clerks I remember that they were trying to combine it with another company they were bringing like a branch of it and part of that company had an umbrella in their logo and they said is there any way that we can represent the merging of these two companies and she said oh I got this so she grabbed a napkin took out her pen and just said yeah no this this is what she gets so she just wrote the word city and put a little um, like little cap over it and lo and behold that's what she created in less than five seconds and she said that's your logo right there and the guys were flabbergasted they said how what how am i going like why should i pay you thousands upon thousands of dollars to make a logo that you just did in five seconds listen here she said listen here everybody what I just gave you was over 50 years of expertise in this field. I was able to make it as fast as I did because I studied, because I went to school, because I slaved ever since the moment I could pick up a pen to refine my skills and be able to do it in the amount of time that I could. Just because I made it in a short amount of time doesn't make it any less valuable. And I, that, that was a moment that I was just like, I love this woman. <laughs> I love this woman. She's definitely on my list of people that I would love to meet in real life. <laughs> Generally would love that. <laughs> but um, but yes, yes. Artists have literally given people the tools to communicate. It is true. It is true, Ruby. They've given people the tools to communicate, the tools to express themselves. Um, I like. I always um have this saying. I have this saying, whenever someone tells me, oh, I'm not an artist, I'm like, no, no, you are an artist. Because if you think about it, we were all born artists. Tell me one child who didn't look at a crayon and 
pick it up and start scribbling with it across the paper or a wall or the floor. You know, tell me one child that didn't do that. We were all born artists. The only difference is somewhere along the way, someone told us that we weren't. Whether it was a relative or a friend or even ourselves. Many times we tell ourselves, I'm not an artist. And so then they give up and they never pick up the crayon again. And, uh, and yeah, yeah, no, like I feel that art is one of the ways that separates us from animals. It's one of the ways that just makes us human, if you think about it. And for someone to say that I'm not an artist, it's kind of going against one's humanity because granted we've made like principles and elements of design and taste to say like, oh yeah, no, this is not a work of art, like this is terrible. But that's just others' opinion. Art is subjective. It could be a work of art for one person, but not for the other. So yeah, we're all artists. That's the idea. <laughs> Mash stars, man, I would have saved a lot of money if someone told me I could pay an artist instead of a therapist to learn how to communicate better. <laughs> oh, Mash stars, I'm gonna quote you on that. That is brilliant. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Um, it, it, like that, that's a that's an interesting way to put it. Yeah, no, I there's a saying: art tells more truth than anything else. Than anything else. Uh, I remember during uh, let's see, let's let's sl switch scenes here. I think we're good. It's my little army. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna name you uh, Groucho, Gonzo, um, like um, Topo, Nemo, uh, like, <laughs> um, and Peppy. <laughs> oh yeah, no. I think I've just discovered uh, my new disease. <laughs> <laughs> 